Thank you, Dr. Stephen, uh, for uh, your introduction. And uh, I would like to thank uh, all members of organizing committee uh, for their great effort for uh, uh, making this successful meeting conference helpful. Uh, now we'll start the session entitled uh, Honey or Apitherapy in Pediatrics. The first talk will be by me. Uh, it's entitled uh, Honey Nebulization Against Respiratory Diseases in Children. I don't know whether the screen is shared or not yet. Screen is shared, Dr. Stephen, please. No, no, not yet, but please uh, open first the PowerPoint and, and okay, then open. Yeah, open the PowerPoint and then share the screen down. I opened the PowerPoint. Yes. Hmm. And then to share the screen is the green button. I made share the screen, but the, the topic is not uh, here. Uh, it, I will share from here. I will share oh. from here from technical desk. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Because it is not. It's not appeal. Does not appear here. Okay. Yes. So. Uh, okay. uh, the, yes, the technician will share uh, the okay. PowerPoint. Okay. 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 Thank you. It yes. And then, now. and then you can. Uh, it is now. Okay. Uh, in a, can, in a uh, minute. Yes, it's coming now. Okay. Okay. Alas, alas, coming. Okay. Thank you. And now I'm going to present uh, uh, this. Uh, so, sorry, start from the first slide. From uh, the first slide. Uh, okay. Uh, please yeah, go. Let's... Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. This one. Yes. Uh, honey nebulization against respiratory diseases in children. This work has been done since 2000 and still ongoing. For nebulization, we used raw unprocessed honey. Three types of honey were used, mainly the Zephas honey. <clears throat> One to two ml honey was dissolved in 20 to 40 ml normal saline to get concentrations ranging from 2.5 to 10%. Here is the picture of the nebulizer. We use ultrasonic nebulizer. There are several types. This type is called Comfort 2. The duration of each nebulization session was 30 minutes. Usually, we give one to two consecutive sessions per day with five to 10 minutes intervals. But more frequent sessions were sometimes given depending on the case. The duration of honey therapy depends on the severity of the case and the type of disease. The age of the patient participants ranged from three months to 14 years. They were of both sexes. BHN is the abbreviation of bee honey nebulization. If it is given to a person who has no chest disorder, no effect will appear. But if he has underlying chest problem, there will be effect in the form of respiratory symptoms. So it helps also in diagnosis. PHN, uh, when it is given to a person with chest problem, first, there will be initial negative reactions. These are called false negative 
or misleading reactions, they are in the form of transient increase in the symptoms and signs of the underlying disease, but it is almost always followed by improvement. That's positive reaction. In this work, this study, we used the honey nebulization for treatment of three diseases, acute bronchial asthma, acute recurrent laryngic, laryngitis or croup, and pneumonia. It should be mentioned that honey therapy was the sole treatment, only treatment, no other drugs were given, including antibiotics, steroids, etc. In acute bronchial asthma, and this started, as I told, since 2000, more than 500 children with mild to moderate acute attacks of asthma were treated. And almost 50 child, 50 children with severe asthma were also treated. Honey therapy consists of oral intake, plus or minus PHN or v honey nebulization. Since 2000, almost more than 5,000 sessions were given without any side effects. This video showed an asthmatic child who is mild to moderate attack, who is receiving honey nebulization. As we see, the vapor is apparent and it has the smell of honey. This cuff is due to BHN, is due to honey nebulization. It is the initial negative reaction. Sometimes the cough is severe and followed by expectoration or vomiting of sputum and then relief. The duration severity of initial misleading reactions, they are called misleading because they are misinterpreted by those who are not expert in honey therapy as allergy or toxicity to honey. The recovery time of patients treated from acute bronchial asthma defined as the number of days from initiation of BHN or B honey nebulization to when no more symptoms are present. It ranges from three to 15 days with a mean of five days. I'm going now to present the honey protocol for treatment of bronchial asthma in children. The form of oral honey plus or minus BHN. Oral honey, we usually start by 5 ml per kilo per day, divided into four doses. Two doses are dissolved in water, and the other doses are given undissolved. Each of undissolved dose is subdivided into smaller doses, 2 to 5 ml, given consecutively. And we can give consecutive doses of 2 to 10 ml undissolved honey as long as there is irritative cough or respiratory distress together with gentle tapping of the back. The dose of oral honey can be increased more than that until a favorable response is obtained. Overdose toxicity to honey has not been reported. Regarding BHN or B-honey nebulization is indicated if there is no response to oral therapy, if there is respiratory distress, or in order to speed recovery. BHN will start by 5 to 10% honey solution given for 30 minutes. The patient may receive one to four or even more sessions per day according to the severity of the attack. The duration of honey therapy, both oral and nebulization, should continue until resolution of all symptoms. Then the dose of oral honey are gradually reduced to 1 to 2 ml per kilo per day, once or twice daily, divided twice daily. If we are encountered with a child, asthmatic child, having cough and wheezing, plus or minus wheezing, and respiratory stress, then we should give nebulization together with oral honey. But if there is no respiratory distress, 
we usually start by oral honey and BHN is added if he, the patient develops respiratory stress or if we want to speed recovery. Child with cough and the respiratory stress, we start BHN one to three sessions consecutively with five minutes interval with 7.5% honey concentration. We can use more or less concentration. If respiratory stress relief, then we continue home treatment. If it's still respiratory stress, we consider hospital admission. The home management, we speak, we spoke about it. We give five ml honey per day. If the cup persists more than two weeks, we do X-ray. Hospital management consists of main, three main things. B honey nebulization, 2.5 to 10% for 30 minutes every two hours until SpO2 rises above 95%. Then every four hours, then every six hours, then every eight hours, and so on until improvement. Oxygen, humidified oxygen might be added and intravenous fluids if the patient cannot tolerate per hour. If the patient improves, discharge of home treatment, but if there is no improvement, we consider other management. And it didn't happen with me when the patients treated this method. As we told before, honey therapy was the only treatment used, no medicines were given, including bronchodilators and steroids. No toxicity was observed to be honey nebulization. Regarding pneumonia, I have treated six children suffering from pneumonia who agreed to use honey only as a sole treatment and not to use antibiotics. The, the mean age of participants was eight years. The treatment consists of honey nebulization plus oral honey. Honey nebulization five to 10% given one session every day for 10 days or two sessions every day for five days with a total of 10 sessions. Oral honey, five ml per kilo per day with a maximum of 100 ml per day, but we can give more. Some pneumonic patients receive up to 150 ml per day, total dose. And we divide the doses into four doses, three doses given dissolved in water and one dose given undissolved and subdivided into smaller doses. Cough and expectoration with or without vomiting are the misleading and negative reactions observed with almost all cases of pneumonia. Transient increase in fever might occur for the first one to three days. This is what happened with our patient. As we see, excuse me, this X-ray of a 14 years old child who had right upper lower pneumonia with linear collapse. And another X-ray was done by the end of treatment. And as we see, there is very good improvement. He improved symptomatically, he improved after three days. Radiologically, we did X-ray after 10 days. Croup for acute laryngitis. For the three diseases I mentioned, uh, the group responds very rapidly to honey nebulization. One to two sessions of honey nebulization without medicines were sufficient to terminate the attack in the five children I treated, because it's difficult to find a large number of children who will agree to use honey only for treatment not to use steroids, not to use antibiotics, especially if the case was recurrent and that they were treated uh, in hospital. This is the girl. She has breaky cough. She had uh, allergic laryngitis. She used to come when she developed the attack to take one or two sessions of honey embolization. Improved rapidly, very rapidly. No steroids. In conclusion, honey nebulization is both safe and effective. 
in treating a group of children suffering from acute bronchial asthma, pneumonia, and cold. In the patients who didn't stop honey therapy and continued the honey therapy as a sole treatment, the success rate was almost 100%. without chest wheezes and respiratory stress associating honey nebulization is a benign false negative misleading reaction almost always followed by improvement my recommendation don't suppress cough or give medicines which lead to dryness of secretions in patients with respiratory diseases especially bronchial asthma and pneumonia getting rid of sputum helps recovery and this is what bhn do Whereas keeping the sputum inside the bronchial tree delays recovery and may complicate the case. Thank you very much. And again, I would like to thank all the members of the organizing committee for this very successful conference. Yes, uh, Professor, you can, yes, stop your share screen. Go above on the button and uh, press on stop share. Above, above. Uh, somewhere in the center and above. Okay. Above. It should be on, on the top of the screen. Uh, a um, button, stop share. It's a red, a red button. Uh, where, where? On the top, uh, above. Right. Uh, in the center. In the center. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. Very good. Now we can hear you, and see you very well. It was a very, very good presentation, Professor Mamduk. Thank you very much. Very, very precious. With many good uh, practical advices, you gave us also the treatment protocol. So now please continue, carry on uh, moderating the section uh, for the next, pre next presenter. We shift to the second speaker, uh, Nina, Professor Nina. Hello. Uh, from... Uh, huh? Slovenia. Mm -hmm. uh, the topic entitled Child uh, Reaction to Bee Stains. Kindergarten Responsibility. Yes. You can start. Mm -hmm. Do you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. It needs full. Okay. Hello, everybody. Oh. Uh, my name is Nina Ilic. I come from Slovenia and I'm going to approach from a totally different point of view uh, uh, in a um, way of thinking and explaining the responsibility regarding API products. So uh, I'm going to talk about um, API Kindergarten. It's a it is a professional pedagogical program that we develop in Institute Enea for municipality of Ljubljana in Slovenia. The important thing about this program is B products since API therapy in a little innovative way approach is a big deal, a big uh, element, a big part of this program. We use API products, meaning beehive products, uh, in children from they we they join kindergarten until they go to school. So, uh, uh, when we are preparing the module for the municipality about this professional program, the important thing we uh, came to. Um, to mind was I did uh, about responsibility. What if something goes wrong? What if some unfortunate reaction of child's body occurs and how to deal with it? Since we are educators and not medical staff, we can face a little bit bigger challenge on that area. So the first important thing on the research I made was I did, identification of the research question and process. The essential purpose of this administrative research is to determine the legal responsibilities of educators and in kindergartens and uh, of the institution, of course, in the event of a big thing. Uh, we wanted to use the results of findings constructively in formation of professional module 
of pedagogical program API Kindergarten. Uh, why is that important? Because emphasize, emphasizing legal responsibility is a motive for the consistent implementation of all safety measures to prevent the possibility of stings and consequently the risk of anaphylaxis. Since we know everything that happens in child's body happens really fast, so we really want to be prepared for all possible events. The concept of, um, uh, for this research, the concept of using mixed methods was used with quantitative, quantitative data further clarifying and supplementing qualitative data. So it's right, quite the opposite of other presentations. Uh, since the base we were researching is, is on words, not numbers. The research approach is thus preferably inductive with elements of a deductive approach. Qualitative research was chosen as a priority mainly because the research is based primarily on words. It was essential to review texts of various sources and forms. We uh, relied on questionnaires, legal bases, professional articles and case law. The methods we used was case study and content analysis. Research tools and techniques were questionnaire and observation of pedag pedagogical workers. It was recognized that a single study would be sufficient to achieve the set objective. Um, the research gradually determines that attitude of teachers to the expertise in recognizing the behavior of behavior of bees, then what are possible negative reactions of the body, everything from mild to severe, and finally finds out who is responsible if a severe reaction, meaning anaphylaxis, occurs during when the preschool child is in an institutional um, care. So we wanted to create guidelines and norms for the professional pedagogical work of teachers, which implement the pedagogical program in their work at the department. With the help of a questionnaire first, we obtained the positions of the observers. So we wanted to, to see what day that happened approximately a year after the first, um, the first uh, school year the project uh, was going on. So after that, we thought it, we should know what was important for teachers and will be used in their work in the department with kids. And we needed the information on what pedagogical action plans they have according to the assessment of importance. On this point, I would like to stress out that the program starts with um, education. We organize seminar of 16 hours when they learn about bee behavior, bee social life, bee biology, pollinators too, not only bees. And then um, api products, meaning beehive products, the effect, the um, possible ways of use, of beehive products and how to be careful when we are talking about so little people. So the first thing we did was accept after that questionnaire was acceptance of the premise. During education and further professional guidance by the professional head of the pedagogical program, it is necessary, urgent, to formulate professional guidelines for educators of educational institution uh, and this document should serve as principles and internal legal acts in the responsible implementation of the professional pedagogical program. Uh, we needed constant, we will need to ensure that cons consistently conscious implementation of all precautionary measures to prevent the possibility of stings and the consequent risk of anaphylaxis. Because as our first find findings show, uh, the educators did really um, think high about all this um, information regarding bees, bee life, and what, how can they absorb them, how can they use and teach about, and with help of bee products, 
and did not pay so much attention on the knowledge um, providing um, about the social life of bees, about the behavior of bee family. So, because if um, we start with, I mean, from empathy, we can uh, see that understanding the species helps us living and coexisting with it. So it means safety. Uh, so the providing knowledge of possible complication in the field of negative, negative reactions of the body, uh, they have to know more about it so they can recognize the importance of these uh, or measures that are needed. Um, I would like to add here the tests for tolerance are very important here and they did not uh, nothing happened, not, no, we had zero bad cases, but we would like to keep it that way. So uh, we would like to make sure that when they use bee product, they make some tests with kids that cannot be as harmful and uh, we, they can be sure whether their body do, would not accept it. So uh, we looked through types of possible reactions to the bee venom and we found out that hymenoptera venom hypersensitivity is the second most prevalent cause of systemic allergic reactions behind drug-induced systemic allergic reactions. So very important. Reactions may be continuous, large local, biphasic, or systemic in nature. Anaphylactic reactions can be fatal within 30 minutes. So uh, the most common reactions are integumentary, gastrointestinal and immunologic symptoms. Uh, and the important part for educators is to recognize those. The state, then we learned, the state through its legal system establishes norms and rules that define responsibility and relations between children, educational organization, parents of the children and the state. So the research takes into account children's rights and the obligation of responsible and diligent conduct of educators in their org organizations where they work. Uh, the legal basis contains exhaustive guidelines for appropriate conduct in the educational process and also the circumstances that the teachers of educational institutions should collectively provide. In Slovenia, children are bearers of human rights and fundamental freedoms in a very important way, but they enjoy them according to their age. They have the right to a healthy environment dignity, healthcare, protection, upbringing, education, subsistence and protection against neglect. And we are really, really strict about those areas of children's lives, especially in institutions. As the research in question is a set of value starting points, we are talking about values, family values, criteria and principles, and about evaluation procedures, the axiological method is also recognized as necessary. In doing so, we take into account ethical values in particular, and because we also use the dimension of duty uh, when we talk about educators, which is very much related to ethical or moral duties, we also talk about deontology. So it means that the morality of an action should be based on whether that action of the educator is itself is right or wrong under a series of rules, rather than based on the consequences of the action. So why is it so? Experiential learning, sorry, yes. Experiential learning is in line with education for sustainable development. It's really, really, um, the strategy um, in Slovenia on all levels. And the most effective method among all pedagogical methods in terms of learning skills, which in turn 
places higher demands on educators in institutions. Therefore, appropriate solutions should, sought, should be sought in such a way that we do not avoid direct contact with bees. It is essential, especially in Api Kindergarten, as in this research, contact with bees represents experiential learning for coexistence with nature and a healthy lifestyle. So the teacher, I'm talking about Slovenia, the teacher is personally responsible for the care of the children in the kindergarten. Their personal responsibility and they have responsibility for their institution of work. The teacher is committed to carrying out activity, activities in such a way as to prevent health risks. Uh, we all know the bee venom is healthy, has good healthy, it has a positive impact on human body, but we have to be careful on that area. So this especially specifically means that children should never be left unattended and they must that they must take all necessary measures and procedures to ensure safety in the activity, activities they carry out by children. So it should be noted that in case of optimal attention and care for preventive measures that provide the highest possible level of safety in the vicinity of bees, teachers are unlikely to be liable in the event of a sting, regardless of the severity of the atypical reaction. Why? Sting cannot be completely prevented from occurring anytime and anywhere. And the individual and unpredictable reaction of the child's body is always beyond the reach of human influence. Uh, let me remind you that that is what I was talking about. Uh, the consequences are the second thing we should consider and evaluate actions of the educator when we talk about responsibility. We cannot predict how uh, any organism will react to be venom. So the rec we recognized that an essential element of security procedure is a legal act. I'm talking about a document, uh, talking about this guidance, how to um provide safety in api kindergarten regulation of relations with an internal internal legal act is well established procedural practice which can also be used in the case of anaphylaxis which is caused by the bee stings the legal responsibility of an educational institution or educator is a positive and negative obligation it depends on the circumstances, professionalism, appropriate professional preparation of activities and premises and other aspects. So we have to not only talk about it, we have to make sure that we are prepared in all possible ways to, um, to ensure safety. Uh, how is that done? According to the research, it should be concluded that in the implementation of the API program, the kindergarten teacher and the educational organization are most likely not liable for damages in the event of bee sting, no matter the reaction, as long as all safety measures are provided. How do we do that? Internal legal act should serve as only pr as principles and norms, the institution and all its education, educational um, staff must obey, must follow, must um, conduct um, in the implementation of program. Uh, and more, more practical and important part of it, it is binding, binding definitions of roles and procedures within the organization's professional staff so they must know who is re responsible for what, what to do exactly. And that has to be a public document somewhere on the wall. So the parents can see it also. The, uh, it shows the responsible and um, professional approach to, um, to, the, to implementation of this program. So finally, I rely on Aristotle's concept, which says that only those that understand can teach. 
Therefore, in this topic, the professional qualification of pedagogical workers is in the first place. And if we want to assure quality of B products in the future, we have to start with education and not only that, with education of the youngest. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nina, for your uh, presentable presentation. You are on time, exactly 15 minutes. Thank you very much. Now we shift to the third speaker from Romania. Mirella, that's right. This is the pronouncing of your name. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Mirella, yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, the topic will be a bee products for children. Yes. Can you see my share screen? Yes, you start, please. Okay, thank you. Hello uh, uh, again. Uh, we, we, we do not see now the share screen, Mirela. Uh, okay. Not Should yet, I do it yet. again? Yes. Not yet. It's uh, okay now? Now it comes and yes, then yes. full full screen. Good. Full screen. Okay. Now we have it. Yes. Okay. Hello again. I'm Dr. Mirela Strans from Romania. Thank you for everyone being here today. I choose to talk about bee products for children, not only as a remedy, but also uh, as a food. As uh, we see before, they are important products even for, uh, from a nutritional point of view. Honey can be used by small children, but also the elders. And it's been said it's beneficial for everybody. It's not as we already saw a sweetener, a very healthy sweetener, and I prefer this to any other kind, but also bring um, micronutrients uh, in the body with therapeutical effects. Uh, after Bogdanov, we have this uh, daily intake medium. And uh, if uh, I know we say don't uh, give uh, honey to the babies under the one years old, but still there are many traditions in many countries, they uh, give honey even immediately after birth. Of course, small doses and when is necessary, because uh, I don't want to, uh, to let small children to uh, get used to sweet taste necessary, but sometimes when you need it, we can use honey. And at the beginning, we can give only a pinch diluted in tea or milk. And then accordingly, we can increase the amount gradually. And if we talk about uh, infants or children over one year, we can add it every day in their menu. We can use it as a sweetener, or we can make our own sweets and you will see exactly in the end, all kinds of healthy sweets, homemade, uh, very rapid, or sweet dishes. For example, when you give them, a, let's say rice with milk, you don't put sugar, you can put honey or just simply eating it. This uh, it's only, honey has a lot of uh, properties, but this is what I show today. It's only my experience with honey and children. And we can use it in weight deficiency and constipation, but also in the area, even in gastroenterology or acute infantry diarrhea. And there are studies and they show giving uh, honey in uh, rehydration solution, but the area stops uh, uh, faster than if you do not use uh, honey at all. Also because honey has probiotics through honey, also because it has uh, itself an antibiotic um, action when we talk about uh, bacterial diarrhea. Also, we can use it for intestinal dysbacteriosis. We know that raw honey and especially wild, or more than that, wild honey, Mapis dorsata, has um, pieces of uh, unique lactobacillus. In malnutrition, anemia, low immunity, memory, respiratory infections, and we already saw from Dr. Mandu how we can use honey. In cough studies, shows that uh, honey is better than dextramethorphan. Agitation, anxiety, you just with the sugar with honey, everything to give to their children, also insomnia. In sports, I mean, I talk about. Uh, 
bigger children or teens who make sport, adding uh, honey improve the performances. And burns and wounds, you know, honey is one of the best. And like uh, we see here, feeding honey to infants will improve memory and growth, reduce anxiety, and enhance their children's performance in later life, study shows. Internally, we can dilute it with uh, water, teas, lemonade, fresh juices, or just uh, single, or uh, there where it is necessary, they can choose uh, honeycomb for uh, sinusitis, mouth disease, or respiratory infections. Externally, uh, besides uh, what uh, Dr. Mandu showed us, things that can be uh, done at home in respiratory infection or cough, you can put a thick layer of honey on chest, cover with a towel and let it there overnight. In the, and I experienced this myself also 10 years ago when I had a very bad bronchitis. I just uh, put it and in the morning you don't have honey on the towel, you don't have honey on the skin because it absorbs inside. Wounds, uh, acne, burns, uh, this is very efficient way and uh, I showed this before, but I will show again this um, small baby, one year old, multiple facial bones after explosion of a stove in the room. Next day, he comes to the office, and 15 days later, he was practically healed. Vibra and raw pollen are very nutrition. They are really super food. They are full of uh, nutrients. Uh, I will not uh, name them again, but you can say they have almost everything that uh, we need. And we started to give them to the children to the age uh, at the age of uh, one, sometimes, but very earlier, but with precaution, always starting with this because it's more easily absorbable and there was almost no allergy to causes. Vibra is also very tasty. Children like it a lot. I have patients that uh, their mother has to uh, hide somewhere Vibra because if they find it, they eat uh, even 50 grams at one time if we let them. If you give them pollen, it's recommended to be sold in water or fresh fruit juices or smoothies. Or also, if I want to, I do this with my nephews, for example. If I want to uh, help them to eat, maybe they don't uh, like the taste uh, all the time, I put them in the sweet. I make, for example, a healthy Nutella from walnut uh, honey, and I put them a little bit of propolis, a little bit of royal jelly, a little bit of pollen, mix them well, and raw cocoa. Cocoa uh, hides the taste generally. So they eat it uh, with very much uh, pleasure. Doses for children, we start with one, two grams per day, and raw pollen seven, eight, we start to give them gradually. If we need for some treatment, we can double the dose, but always we increase the amount gradually in the beginning. For bee bread, start with one piece and increase the dose every two days until you reach the desired dose. This is just to be very precautious with allergy, but actually the worst case is when I give them at age of one a full mixture of all the products. I and mean, when I say it's honey, we bread, uh, royal jelly and propolis for immunity. Raw pollen also start with few grains, diluted in liquid and increase the dose daily. We use it for disorders of weight. Uh, we have children that could not gain weight and after start to, to, to take bee bread, in a few weeks, uh, they started to gain weight. Also in malnutrition, anemia, in enterocolitis or intestinal bacteriosis, I always recommend the uh, bee bread or pollen after an antibiotic treatment due to the lactobacillus. Um, also in constipation, low immunity, infectious, memory issues, in sport, eczema. And let's go to the propolis, the antibiotic of uh, bees, infections of various etiologies, whether we talk about respiratory or digestive or urinary or uh, whatever, we can give a propolis single or in combination with honey and essential oils 
okay we for children we have to be careful with essential oils what uh, we can uh, or we can give extracts of propolis we use also uh, propolis uh, air propolis and you don't see but here i mean uh, house here we have this uh, propolis yeah i'm saying in uh, propolis air right now for respiratory infections, asthma, allergic rhinitis. For burns, wounds, skin infection, there are sprays or extracts or uh, ointments. And for fingers, I, I learned this from uh, Dr. Stengaciu many years ago. And I use it also for children, also for adults. Propolis tincture in the beginning, then propolis ointment. And the result was very good. And also, they didn't have later, you know, that um, a pain that can appear sometimes to be residual. And th this uh, we see actually in elders to have uh, big pains after fingers. But using this uh, recipe, uh, that was very useful. Forms of administration are usually for children. I prefer water extract or soft extract of propolis. Of course, having this doses, uh, this concentration, I have to calculate uh, the doses. Propolis tincture, raw propolis powder, as I show you, uh, propolized air, ointment spray, and if it's necessary, also ointment. And propolized air, it's been made studies with this kind of. Um, machine and in, an Italian study made, made, let's say like 10 years ago or something, they, it showed that reduced absences in kindergartens with 50% due to the decreased respiratory infection. Practically, they don't take uh, the microbes to one to another. And we also did this in few kindergartens in Cluj and the uh, results were the same. And also, if they get ill, uh, this kind uh, of uh, machine put in, uh, in the room where they stay uh, in kindergarten reduce the very and duration of symptoms. Also, we find this propolized and reduced tiredness. This is the dose we use for uh, internal uh, use for propolis tincture water extra for soft extract. Uh, we have to calculate it. And royal jelly, royal jelly, one of my favorite uh, bee products. We all know it's extremely good for low immunity. Also, we use it for deficiency of weight, anemia, memory disorder, stress, or effort physically or intellectual in um, diseases of nervous system as depression, yes, even to children or when I say children, I refer also to the teenager, brain immaturity, and I had uh, two and a half years baby with uh, uh, burn, birth uh, sufferance, and at the age of two and a half years, he, he can barely can move, he has no coordination, emotional imbalance, um, aggressive lack of attention and after we started to give him a uh, product and uh, then uh, especially royal jelly alternative with a pillar meal his state increased very much in it's starting actually after first month his neurologist says i don't know what you do but please continue okay uh, mirela sorry you have one minute to to conclude uh, i will finish because in two minutes it's done everything for flu, three, five grams per day for one to three days. Actually, I had kids uh, after first dose of three years old, years old. After first dose of uh, three grams of royal jelly, fever that was there for five days, decreasing three, four hours. Normal dose, we use zero, five grams per day. And I will just show you this in uh, age with uh, 13 of sufferance. I will just show you in the beginning. It was uh, acute and encephalomyelitis for three years old. So she's 16 now. You can see her in the beginning. And here you can see after uh, three months of treatment with big doses of royal jelly, but also other big products. 
so she can move without help. Uh, toilet was a problem, emotional environment was a problem. So this is from uh, last uh, November. Happy cocktail for immunity, great results and uh, other uh, issues. Children with uh, every month uh, antibiotic, 12 years, months in a year after happy cocktail they never had before. Usually this happening uh, when they start uh, to go to kindergarten or school. Thank you very much. Yes, I will yes. stop sharing now. Yes. Just a second. Thank you, Mirella, very much for your presentation. Uh, I, I have a, please, I have a question regarding uh, raw propolis powder, raw propolis intake in children. Uh, at what age, uh, the youngest age you uh, experience it, this? After one year, after, at yes. age of one year, but usually I mix it with honey or other big, we, we can mix it with uh, a honey and give it before one year of age, for example, six months or seven, something for, like that. For this age, I prefer the extract. Extract. Like the alcoholic yeah. extract or water? Water. Water, water. extract, I prefer. For these small Thank children. You. Now I think we finished the session. Yes, almost. And uh, uh, just one very important announcement from Nina. Uh, in October, we'll have an event. Uh, Nina, can you tell us about it? With Professor Mamdouh Abdul Rahman, with several colleagues, I'm sure with Mirela Strantz. Uh, yes, thank you. In October uh, this year, we are organizing a fabulous event. It's all about children. Uh, Api Therapy for Children is the title. And we're gonna talk about the uh, various topics regarding the B products and safety and um, medicinal plants and rules and safety and um, all uh, different things. It's really, uh, really, um, it's gonna be good. You must yes. come. Yes, so October 22 to 24. Yes. Please write down this date in your calendar to see again our wonderful speakers Professor Mamdouh Abdul Rahman, Nina Ilic, and Mirela Strantz, and many others coming from all over the world. Thank you very, very much for this, Professor Mamdouh. Uh, I think you. we can conclude this section. Thank you. Thank so you.